Hello, everyone. Welcome to another topic in our podcast series. My name is Robin Dolezal. With me, as always, is David Renzi and Alex Pars. Together, we are with Ironwood Financial. Guys, this is a great topic and one that uh, we're very familiar with. It's something, quite honestly, we talk about many of times in our first meetings with clients. Many times, clients want to know, you know what to look for in an advisor. So we're going to answer those questions today. Alex, give me the first one. What's one thing someone should look for in an advisor? I mean, the first thing I would want to know is how do they get paid? You know, because that's very, very important, as we talked about in some of our other videos, is, you know, what they're going to recommend, whether they're commission-based or fee-based, drastically changes depending on how they're paid. So someone who's commission-based, they've got incentive to sell you the highest commission product they can get away with. Someone who's fee-based, you know, they don't get paid more for X or Y or Z. So generally, they're going to look to do what they think is in your best interest. And they're actually held to that standard legally. So again, number one most important question is, you know, how does an advisor get paid, in my opinion? I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of tell in that one by saying, you know, you wanna look for someone who's a fiduciary, because uh, that goes along with what you just said. Someone who's a fiduciary uh, legally needs to do what is in your best interest, not the advisor's best, best interest, not the company's best interest, but only the client's best interest. They are going to uh, try to avoid conflicts of interest, and if there are any, they'll let you know. Uh, and the other version of that would be, you know, someone selling commission products, like Alex just mentioned. They may be selling things that are suitable, but that's about it, right? So you want to find someone who's a fiduciary. Go ahead, Alex. And it's a, it's also very difficult to be a fiduciary and sell commission products because you are you know, kind of directly at odds with your clients. It's like when you're negotiating with the car salesman, every dollar more they get you to pay is more money in their pockets. So they, you know, even if they said they're doing what's right for you, the reality is they are directly opposed to your best interests. Right. So commission products, it's not quite that bad, but it is very similar. All right, David, what to look for in a financial advisor? All right, the number two most important item is experience. You want an advisor who has some designations, who's seen a variety of market conditions, and who's been around for a while. I mean, it's, it's hard to be an expert in your field when you've only been in the industry for two years. And so I would, I would really be focusing on someone who's been around for 10 years plus, and who's seen things and done things, and, and actually talked to people and worked with and met their goals through a variety of markets. I mean, it's, it's tough when that advisor is experiencing their first down market and then trying to explain to you, hey, this is a strategy that works, when they don't have any idea if it does or not. You're right. That's I something that's actually a great, so great. great point. I look at myself, uh, you know, gosh, 2003 version of myself. <laughs> I, I feel like I've learned a lot. I think that's a great point. Well, I was just going to jump on to what David said. I mean, every time there's a, a really strong bull market, I don't know if you remember back in 2001, if you turned on, uh, you know, Facebook or YouTube or TikTok or whatever. There was all these financial gurus. What were they all talking about? Remember? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crypto. Tech stocks. They were talking about crypto. Oh, two thousand. Right. So that's all. This is how you get rich. I'm a, I'm a crypto guru. I know everything. Well, that's easy to do when the market's going up. You'll notice the following year. I don't know if you remember. The following year, 2022, was a pretty negative, a negative year. And well, guess what happened? Those people all kind of disappeared. And crypto went down, what, 75, 95%, depending on what it was. So it's easy to be an expert in an up market. Right. I want to jump in and say uh, it's important to interview a couple different advisors, right? I don't think just finding the first one that you run across is important. Um, obviously, you want them to have experience in history, like we just talked about. I think if you can find that, find one that's got a, uh, or is a fiduciary, that's important as well. Um, I want to say some of it is is you know, do you like the person and do they mesh with your your investment style, right? We've actually run across lots of clients who had advisors, and this client, you know, their experience tells us that they're a little bit more conservative. Yet their advisors got them in a very aggressive allocation. So those two people are not really aligned, in my opinion. So find someone that, that you mesh with and don't just hire the, the first person that you come across. And that actually brings up another point, which is funny. When we're interviewing people who have currently have a financial advisor, we ask them a question like, well, what's the strategy you're following? And what, nine times out of 10, they couldn't tell you. They don't know what they're signed up for, right? What's this? I don't know. He just does stuff. Okay, well, you know, it's probably a good idea before you hire someone to understand why they're doing the things they're doing. You know, what strategy are they following? 
does it make sense to you? You know, there are lots of different ways out there. You know, one kind of amusing strategy is you're only invested in the market when Congress is out of session. So if Congress is in session, you're completely in cash. I mean, so there's, you know, millions of different strategies. You should know what your strategy is and make sure it, you know, resonates with you. Yeah, good point. All right, David, what else should we look for in a financial advisor? And I think something that's, an, you know, I've, I've heard some horror stories where I'll give, I'll give a particular example. I had a client who came in, she was a prospect at the time, and she said, you know, I had a financial advisor and I got nervous because the market was falling and I called in and they said, hey, he's busy, he'll call you back tomorrow. And the next day she got a call, we're based in Arizona, she got a call from someone in Florida that said, hey, I'm your new advisor, <laughs> welcome. She was transitioned and pushed off to someone else. And I think it's very important and you don't really see that when you have a, a small wealth management firm or small relative to the big wirehouses, but it's, it's important to know who you're a client of. Is it your particular advisor or is it the actual firm? I mean, if you, if you go to a bank, you might have the issue of, hey, your, your advisor has now transitioned to some other location. And that makes it extremely inconvenient for you if you wanna stay with that person. Yeah, that's a good point. I thought they did that on purpose. I thought the banks did that on purpose to make sure that you couldn't get too good a relationship with someone so that if the advisor left the firm, they couldn't take the client with them. I mean, if you're working with any of the major warehouses, though, you're, you're basically calling an 800 number. I mean, I've my first client that you know, I ever started working with is still a client, and that's been 24 years. So it's, it's definitely an advantage, in my opinion, to have someone that you know and trust and knows your situation. You don't want to have to explain it again on the phone to the next person you talk to. Good point. I want to say the next thing a client should look for in an advisor is maybe credentials. I know we talked about this in one of our other podcasts, but credentials really show uh, someone that the advisor has gone the extra mile uh, to study the craft, uh, to take the time to learn the industry. You know, we've talked about credentials before, and one of the things I think you should look for is someone with a CFP or even a CFA or either or. Um, there's lots of designations out there, but those are the two that I would recommend a client would look for. Yeah, that's a good point because again, there are designations that mean a lot less, in my opinion, than those two. Right. And some that are very specialized. You know, there's a designation out there, CLU, that you see a lot of financial advisors. What that means is they're relatively expert in insurance products. Well, insurance is part of the financial plan, but nobody thinks of well, not no client probably thinks of financial planning as how many different insurance products can I get? Right. You know, they're thinking about investments and retirement planning <laughs> and tax strategies. So you have to be careful with the designations, make sure that they are broad-based financial planning, not just a specialty to designation. You know, Alex, that reminds me of something else that you should consider when hiring an advisor. Is that person providing financial planning or is it just purely asset management? I mean, we've seen situations where people will come in and they say, hey, I've had an advisor for 15 years and I have no idea when I can retire. Yep. And I'm and I'm shocked. You're gonna you know you're gonna take off for, on a trip, and you don't know where you're going, right? What are the chances you get sure. there? Sure. Like I'm going to Michigan. Well, that at least helps. Okay, a lot of people if they've never done a financial plan, they don't have a goal. You need to have a number. You need to have, you know, I need to have X dollars, X dollars in pensions and Social Security, my house paid off. You name it. What are the different things I need to have done? in order to be able to retire. Because if you don't know that, chances of you getting there are significantly lower. And I think it helps hold both parties accountable. I mean, if you have a financial advisor who lays out a path for you, now you have to meet your savings goals and that financial advisor has to meet their management goals. So it, it really keeps both parties accountable and, and makes it gives you a better chance of actually meeting those goals and having a successful retirement. How about independence? I always like an advisor who's independent. Ooh, that's and a good tied one. To, uh, a brokerage firm or a bank, you know. Um, independence means, you know, the advisor is not going to have have to sell a certain type of product or a certain brand of product. They're going to go out there and they're going to look for the most efficient uh, investment that uh, that's going to be important for their clients as well. And, that, and that's the reason we founded this firm is we were at a company that, you know, had a particular product that they wanted us to sell. And we were saying, well, that's not best for our clients. And they said, okay, we'll find different clients. You know, they, we, they give you quotas, they give you trips to Jamaica if you sell enough of a particular product. But the reality is, you know, is that necessarily best for the clients? Probably not. Probably you need, I mean, it's much better in my opinion to be able to choose from, you know, the whole world of investments. Another great question I like to ask is, is, you know, Fidelity, you've heard of them, they're great, right? Is Fidelity the best at every type of money management? The answer is obviously no. 
So if you're with a firm that only uses one fund family or one brand of investments, you know, are they the best at it? Well, they may be best at something, but chances of them being best at everything is highly unlikely. Well, it just isn't. <laughs> so. That's like me at sports, Alex. I'm not great at them all, just really good at a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> there was a beer pong, right? Was that the one? <laughs> All right, guys, I think we hit a lot of them. Um, obviously, uh, there's a couple of important ones, like obviously the independence, uh, fiduciary, fee-based were some of the top ones that I've heard. But most importantly, obviously, I think just uh, you know making sure you do your due diligence. We're here is obviously to help. Um, you know, you can find us at ironwoodfinancial.com. We'd be happy to sit with people. We sit down with folks all the time uh, on a non-fee basis just to talk about you know how we serve as clients, how we manage money. So if that's something you're interested in, please use us as a resource. You can also reach us at 520-318-4600. Gentlemen, I appreciate your time. Until next time, we'll talk to you real soon.